everybody, Rococo here. I'm back with a new section of BDFB, and today we're going to be looking at applicators, aka the tools we use to put makeup on our face. If you walk into a store, you watch someone's collection video, or you scroll through people's setup on Instagram, you will see a lot of different kinds of applicators with a lot of different kinds of uses, which is fine and awesome, but it can be a little overwhelming. Fortunately, navigating the overwhelm is kind of the whole point of breaking down the face feed, so let's tackle this together. In this video, we will be splitting applicator types into sponges, brushes, and built-in applicators, and discussing their uses. Now, when I say sponges, I'm not talking about kitchen sponges. Featuring a completely different texture, these special sponges are usually shaped similar to a teardrop or an egg. Able to be used wet and dry, these applicators became a staple after the Beauty Blender launched back in 2007. While most makeup sponges stick to the original shape set forth by the Beauty Blender, you can find ones with variations including angles and flat edges meant to make it easier to reach different parts of the face. I highly encourage you to experiment with what shapes work for you. You can also experiment with size. The traditional Beauty Blender is considered your size standard and is used for large areas of coverage. However, many sizes have become available too and are targeted more at precise areas. Sponges are not everyone's preferred option though, and they may not be yours. So let's turn our attention to brushes. Brushes can be a big endeavor, so we're going to take this shape by shape. First we have the fluffy powder brushes. From the top down, these look a little bit like a circle and their bristles or hairs are more loosely placed. As the name suggests, they are mostly intended for powder style makeup and they can pick up a lot of product particularly if it's a loose powder. These are the kind of brushes that you reach for when you do not want a hard line and you typically see them used for their soft, kind of flawless transitions. I have lumped what is called a flame brush into this section as is effectively a tapered powder brush and they do have a similar function as far as the final application goes. Some brands have identification numbers on the bottom of their brushes, so if you're looking for something like Morphe, you know exactly which one you're using and need to buy again. Next up, we have our contour and highlight specific brushes. The fluffy fan-shaped brush can be called a fan or a highlight brush. This brush gives a very light touch to application and works best with powders. You don't have to apply your highlighter with this brush, but it does work well for that purpose. The other three brushes here are large, thick, angled brushes. These are called contour brushes, and not to be confused with an angle brush which we will look at in a moment. As the name suggests, these are usually for our contour application. The fluffiness allows for that blended look while angled cut of the brushes helps create controlled direction and line. Compare them to these small angled brushes and notice how the small angled eye brushes are a lot flatter and, well, smaller. As the name suggests, these are mostly used for eye and brow area. However, they also come in handy for small areas of contour like nose or lips. The bristles here are more condensed and lined up, making them perfect choice for angled shapes and line creation. Keep in mind that size affects the precision and application. Smaller brush, smaller, more precise lines. Next up, we have possibly the most common brush in my collection. These are the flat brushes with the rounded top used mostly for concealer or eyeshadow. You will hear them referred to as eyeshadow or concealer brushes. However, the technical term that I use is from painting, and I call these filbert brushes. I know it's a little funny, but it is a flat oval shaped brush, so... Like all makeup brushes, there are some size variations that happen with filberts. The big filbert brushes give you a broader stroke while the small ones are a little bit more fine-tuned. Filberts provide smooth, well-packed application, but your edges tend to be harsher than a powder brush due to the condensed, uniform bristles. You also won't get as controlled of a line with a filbert brush due to the rounded tip being harder to place flush against the skin. However, getting into curves and creases or patting down color, these brushes do very well. As you get into more complicated looks, you'll find that these type of brushes expand your shape range as you create. Another thing you'll use as you work on your technique is your precision tools. These are our precision brushes. These require the steadiest hand and arguably the most practice as they are less than forgiving. These are the brushes you'll use for super fine lines and details. You can find liner brushes as flatheads as well. I consider these a precision brush as they also get used for a liner 
at the opposite end of the spectrum, we have our blenders. We have flat blenders and we have round blenders. These are our flat blenders. All blenders are going to be super dense. Their whole existence is to take what you've put on your face and smoosh it together so that it fades gradually into the rest of the look. Once again, you're choosing your blender size based off of how much area you intend to blur out. Bigger area, bigger brush. Rounded top blenders will still be super dense. The only difference is the rounded top. If you aren't sure what I mean by dense, basically the brush part won't bend away easily if you smush your finger into it. There's also a rubbery ended blender in this category. You'll find this is like a pencil eraser or a tiny sponge. This is what you want to lean towards if you're blending out liners due to its resilience. Up next, we have our specialty brushes. Specialty brushes are going to be those trendy things you find on Instagram and TikTok that you don't see easily falling into the previously listed shapes, spoolies, and your multi-purpose brushes. Your multi-purpose brushes are exactly what they sound like. Double-edged, they usually have two types of brush attached. I have a Smashbox one that has a blender and an applicator filbert, and I have a Morphe one which has an angled brush and a spoolie. Generally, double-sided brushes are used for different products on the same part of the face. Spoolies are the brush that look a little bit like a pipe cleaner. You may recognize them as well inside of your mascara brush. They're really good for lashes and brows or any other type of facial hair you may wish to style. While eyebrow spoolies generally look the same, the ones in mascara, also referred to as mascara wands, change dramatically from product to product. So in general, just identify them as being a stick with 360 degrees of tiny pokies at the end. Mascara wands or spoolies are an example of a built-in applicator. These are the applicators that come already inside the product you've bought. The most common ones outside of mascara and brows are called reservoir and doe foot applicators. In general, doe foot applicators are solid in the middle and have an angled top. They're also kind of fuzzy. A reservoir tip is not solid all the way through and it looks kind of like a pipe cleaner that's been bent into a triangle and stuck on the end of a stick. These types of applicators are intended to hold more product in the little hole that it forms so that when you apply it, it's a bit thicker. If you don't like the way they feel or apply, don't feel limited to using the built-in applicator your product comes with. You can use any brush you want, just transfer it over as you need. Makeup is about expressing yourself, exploring artistry, and having fun. So please, experiment with these different types of brushes. We know how to identify them and their general usage, but you're never limited. Play around with it, see what works for you, and as always, Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you for watching this video. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed it. It just shows me that there's people out there watching, enjoying it, and makes my heart happy. On to the next adventure. Until next time, everybody. Love ya!